Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Josh and Jason Monday Christian and Conspiracy Podcast Show. I am your host, Josh Monday. If you don't know me, I'm a Christian rapper, devoted husband, father, and army veteran. And I'd like to introduce you to my co-host. He's a Christian, devoted husband, and father. What's up, Jason? What's up, man? How you doing? How's everything going out there? Uh, it's going good. It's going good, man. Thank you. Thank you for taking please, the time please, out. What's going on right now? And uh, let's, get into this, let's get into this show. So we got a, a very special guest for you guys. Uh, he has written over 50 books, and he's uh, super solid on the Bible theology. Uh, every show that I, literally I've, I've heard him on, he, he just crushes it, you know, and uh, his name is Ken Amney. How you doing, Ken? Great. Thanks for having me, gents. No problem. No problem. Thank you for coming on, um, and thank you for contacting us. Um, I would have obviously ran into you right after as soon as Todd had you on your show, I probably would have contacted you anyways, right after that. <laughs> I, re I really like what you were going over, but, um, so if you could tell my audience, like how you came to Jesus, you know, and became a, a messianic Jew, I think that's, that's something that people are probably not almost, you know, familiar with all the time. And I think it's pretty interesting. Well, one answer of how I came to Jesus is kicking and screaming. Yes, us too, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you would have ever told me, even one year before, that I was going to be a believer, I would have just, you're so insane, you need to just be locked away. There's absolutely no way that's ever going to happen, ever. <laughs> but then looking back on my life, it had really been a very, very, very long um, struggle of finding the truth. And so, well, when I finally met the truth <laughs> in person, I mean, the, the one that who said, I am the truth, then, well, hi, it's just und undeniable as, as difficult as it was in a lot of yes. ways, uh, as blessed as it was in every way. So I, I generally point back to a moment in my childhood, and we're talking single digits where, you know, I, when I was born, we didn't have the tooth fairy. We had the teeth mice, los ratoncitos, you know. <laughs> okay. And, and so one day I found out that there's no such thing as the ratoncitos. It's really just my parents. And I mean, that's the same function as the tooth fairy. It's taking your teeth and leaving money. But I found out it was my parents doing that. And I was just incensed. I mean, I, I couldn't believe I'd been deceived like that. Wow. And... And I definitely trace back my interest in finding the truth to that moment of being a child and recognizing, wait a minute, but I was told something is a fact that wasn't a fact. I was told this is true, what's happening, and it wasn't. It was a deception, right? And that kind of just led me in a lifelong search for the truth and looking for it wherever I thought I might be able to find it. Um, that's that's amazing because uh i tell my son there's no santa claus there's no tooth fairy there's no there's no easter bunny because if if i lie to him about this there's no way he's gonna believe me about god or jesus or anything like that he's gonna be like this is all just more part of your tricks and when that that's a good point to put because when you start him off young like that you basically are you set them up to not believe in you. You're you're already a liar. And if you could, if your parents are constantly lying to you as like that, I'm like, I understand that 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 you you try to give them uh uh some memories and a fun childhood, but there's 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 consequences that come to that. And when you dip into that you know type of spiritual fornication, I would say probably you start to put out there that type of you know, your kids don't trust you no more. It's hard to get, it's hard to get, the, it's, it's, it's hard to put that grasp out there to people when they don't under, it's a simple thing in life. You teach your kids that it's boom. And you gradually go on and, and, and you, you, you create chaos out of one little subject of just lying to your kids. It, it creates a whole chaos inside the home. It's weird. It's, it's, it's that's, I like the way you said that. I can't really, I agree with that. Well, hundred percent. Or you could become like one of the greatest researchers, like uh, Gary Wayne or Ken and Ami. <laughs> <laughs> if you lie to him no i'm just kidding no i'm just kidding brother i'm just kidding they actually really the government says oh we care for you we care for you we're gonna give you this and the bible is this and, the, and, and you, well you gotta look through the bible make sure 
It even tells you study and make sure that the stuff is approved, make sure everything is good and, and rightly divide it up. Don't, don't just take everything for it. You got to research it and you can't just take everything for it's what it's what somebody says and tells you. Yeah. And in fact, my kids enjoy say Christmas, I think even more because they recognize their gifts are coming from family members. Yeah, and the focus is that uh, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. I mean, it's about Jesus. It's yeah. Christ Mus, you know. But yeah, now, you know what's interesting? If you get some time, go on YouTube and search for Santa Syndrome. Uh -huh. uh, there's a guy who's <laughs> very sarcastic, and it's kind of funny in a way to listen to. But he's basically uh, posted a lot of. He did a series of videos of clips of atheists who are tracing their atheism back to finding out that Santa wasn't real. That's exactly what we've been talking about. Wow. They're dead yeah. serious about it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's it's really good. interesting. Yeah. You're, you're wrecking it. Cause it says in the Bible, God says, you know, or Jesus says, you know, to think like a child, keep that, keep that your, your, your imagination like that, but don't get drawn into something that's totally false. And, and, and it's not, it's not, it's not right. It's just, it's, it's, it's crazy when you dabble in things like that, it's, it's how far you would go and how much you would believe in it other than what's the truth is. And that's, that's, that's how you get this, this fairy tale world and people believe in, 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 in the fairy tale world when it's, that's not, that's not what you should be believing in. That's, that's, that's the, that's the facade. That's the, that's the trick. That's the, they want you to watch over here and why they, why they're doing this over here. And all you do is pay attention to this and they're, robbing you blind they're, they're taking you apart so really i agree man i mean you got like you got you got your, you getting some notes ready or what what do you got in there uh yes uh what's happening is i'm 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 my my system is calling me on my phone sorry for my uh my work i apologize guys i'm listening though go ahead there you go. Sky i'm having a him. i'm having an overflow on one of my wells <laughs> Sorry, guys. I don't mean to do that. That's just uh, what's happening. But go ahead, go ahead. It's like you will not be discussing this. <laughs> Seriously. But, okay, Ken. So, what do you think about? Uh, so, what do you think about Christmas, man? I know it's we 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 dig deep into it before, and uh, you know the pagan background of it and the pagan um, you know roots of it. We, we we've been trying to figure out how to do this. I know that you said you disperse it like as if, Hey, family members are buying you gifts. Uh, you're just celebrating Jesus. Um, how do you, how do you handle that? So my buddy, uh, JP holding, uh, James Patrick holding, he published a really interesting book tackling the issue of whether Christmas is actually of pagan origins. And he did a great job of dispelling many of the, the myths, um, basically about how um, when you get down to it, there's very little that you could concretely claim is a direct correlation between paganism and Christmas, especially if you are recognizing what you're doing and where the emphasis needs to be. So, you know, I, what, one interesting thing I found out is some people have begun claiming that Jesus was born on a September 11th. And they came at that through a couple of different ways. One of them is an interpretation of um, Revelation chapter 12 based on actual celestial objects and taking that back into time. And anyhow, now what's interesting is if he was born in September, that means December would not have been where he was born, but it would have been when he was conceived. So it's kind of interesting how Christmas kind of came into it, relating to his life somehow. Mm -hmm. But overall, um, yeah, I personally find it very frustrating to live in a culture where the last months of the year are dominated by quote unquote Christ Christmas, but then you know, you're at the mall or the store and you're hearing those songs and you're like, well, this is about a tree and the snow and a deer and a morbidly obese guy that's going to break into your chimney. But I'm not hearing anything about Jesus. It's rare. Or I'm yeah. seeing all these decorations. And again, I'm seeing trees. I'm seeing snow. I'm seeing deer. I'm seeing Santa. I'm seeing elves. But where's the manger? You know, it's, it's very rare. It's very rare. 
Yes. Uh, and incidentally, I'll throw this in just for fun. There was a mayor who was responding to the ACLU trying to get him to remove the manger from government property. And he said, they're just jealous because they don't have three wise men or one virgin in their whole organization. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, dude. <laughs> what seen is, is what they don't understand is that when 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 you when you put that all together, that story is 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 first of all, in the winter time, you're not no no one's going to be traveling around at that time, you know, trying to find it's going to be cold. And, and also the, the shepherds are not going to have their, they're not going to, they're not going to be watching their flocks in the, in the, in that late, late in the year. They're, they're not going to be out there at night. And it's obviously he was born in, in, in Bethlehem. So those, those flocks that, he, that supposedly I learned that I think it is, is probably Ruth and Boaz's is, 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 is land that was there. So there he was, he was, uh, they're not, they're not, they, they stopped tending to their flocks late at night at around October, September, October. So and also, I think one of the other things they said about that is that uh, they say it might be September is because when someone serves in the temple, they serve for that month that they were born. And I think one of the I think James was in that during that time and he, he was born and it's, and he was born and he was serving in September. So that's what I that's what I, I came up with. That's, that's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, people have come to that conclusion from very different angles so that's very interesting and uh you know i've been to israel in december and believe me it's cold oh, i was in kuwait i was in kuwait oh. dude and 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 uh i showed up there at the end of uh or the beginning of november and i'm, I'm not saying that israel is going to be the same as kuwait but i mean it's it's a desert you know and, it, and it's freezing there yes sent out during at that time and there's no way. I think it was Augustus who sent out the the, the census. One of one of the or Caesar Julius Caesar. One of them did. I, I can't. I, don't, I can't even call. I had too much coffee tonight. <laughs> it's all and right. You're not gonna send out a census in December in a freezing cold weather. You're not gonna send people out in, like that if you're, you know. But it's your- it's all it's all interesting. Um, Incidentally, now- what we what we do with our manger is we take the wise men and we put them far away from it. Because they weren't there at Jesus' birth, they showed up like what a year and a half later or so. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't just three wise men. These, these yeah, that too. Guards from from yeah. from uh, from Persia. These guys were some heavy hitting dudes. These guys were the ones that, that would select the next king in the, in their country. So they're coming to worship. They're rolling through the uh, uh, Roman territory like, hey man, we're we're even Herod was like, what the heck's going on here? He was pretty. He was pretty. The whole city was in an uproar. Yeah, it was noticeable, yeah. So, so yeah. yeah, you always want to take your wise men and move them, like, to the other part of the room. And yeah. so then, especially if people ask you, well, why'd you do that? Well, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. The accurate view <laughs> of it, yeah. You're taking away from Jesus' deity and why you're doing it, because they're paying more attention to the wise men than they are to birth. So you, you, uh, you also, I know you kind of went over some stuff about, like, the virgin birth, like how, you know, some people would say that hey it's the same story as these other you know these other gods like mithra osiris and all that stuff can can you kind of go over that for us sure and by the way uh, last christmas i saw a little cartoon with one of the wise men looking at the other guy and said you're bringing gold i thought we agreed nothing over 10 shekels <laughs> 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 but no really quickly it was just uh something that came up because of the whole like uh really the zeitgeist documentary popularized some mythology of its own and the whole what's called the uh, jesus mythicism especially the aspect of it that's called pagan copycat this concept that jesus oh maybe he was a real person but really this sort of character was built around him to make him into something he is not. And so he was portrayed as possessing these qualities of various other mythological or legendary figures throughout history. And you get this claim that, oh, all of these figures had 12 apostles and all of them um, were born oh, yeah. of a virgin and all of them were born in December, all of them were resurrected and all of them, this and that and the other. And that's something that's very easy to say. <laughs> yeah. 
but serious research have got, has gone into all of those aspects and none of, none of them work, nothing works. It's just that it's convenient when you water things down so then it makes everything sound and look similar. So it's just that I had been asked about that and I just threw out the examples off the top of my head that for instance, we're told Mithras was born of a virgin and then the Buddha was born of a virgin. And well, Buddha's mother uh, had a dream that a white elephant came out of her side. Okay, I'm not sure how a dream and that it was an elephant and that it came out of her side that's considered a virgin birth but hey why not just call it a virgin birth and then you can claim that uh, the christians <laughs> picked up on that i mean it, it doesn't work or mithras the myth that he was born out of a rock yeah rock and of course the the joke is well i hope the rock was a virgin but uh, <laughs> that's not exactly the kind of thing that we're talking about when it comes to jesus right so uh Maybe you want to claim unusual births, but you can no longer just call them virgin birth because it's convenient for you to then build this narrative that uh, the Jesus character was just copying all these uh, pagan characters. It just that stuff doesn't work. Yeah. There's there's some more stuff that I hear all the time, too, from some of these um, some of the conspiracy, like, you know, the, the, the Jordan Maxwell stuff like that, you know, and and um, I even saw a comment on one of your videos that you did on tinfoil hat. And the guy was like, I can't wait until Ken Amney finds out that the S U S O N is really the S U N, you know, like I know they're getting that from that Jordan Maxwell study. Yeah. They're getting it from that Jordan Maxwell study. What he said is that the sun rises. So it resurrects or like, you know, it's, it's the S U N. So he's basically saying the whole Christian story is all, he says, he says story. I don't believe it like that. I believe it's all 100%. And I, you know, but, uh, that's the way he he comes at it. And it's like, it's almost like he's planted to, you know, he's able to know all this knowledge that he knows about the government and everything he knows. He's like a shield almost, I feel. I'm not, Jordan Maxwell, if you listen to this, I'm sorry, I'm just feeling like this. You, you like, they give you all this knowledge, but then they let you talk, like just totally try to dismantle Christianity and you have all these followers and then you're trying to dismantle Christianity. So you're, you're, you're finding somewhat of the truth with the stuff you're talking about with the government and stuff, but then you just try to water down Christianity and say that Hindu was the first religion and those are the ones that are real. And it's like, wow, come on, you know, but have you ever heard that before where people say that? Oh yeah. And you'll have to send me a link afterwards to that comment. Cause I'd be interested in asking this person something like this. So you're saying because sun likes like sounds just like sun and S U N is spelled just like S O N and that in English has something to do with the ancient Greek or Hebrew or Aramaic or Latin of two millennia ago. How exactly? Well, they'll they'll say that the sun is the light of the of the you know whatever I don't know I, I'm not I can't really explain it because I don't believe it but it's just the languages yeah 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 they're being translated are not going to be the same it doesn't matter yes Greek is so precise it. that you have to have five one ver one adjective or verb has to fit like five criteria to be so precise they're not going to mess those words up they're not going to say oh no, okay, I know okay. I know. But I'm, that's what they try to do. They, they're, they're trying to say that through time, it's going to be, oh, it's just the S-U-N. It's just like, okay, well, uh, resurrect. It's just like how, how, how Simnaremus said that the light shined down and, and hit her stomach and she had a, a virgin-born uh, Tammuz and stuff like It's all the same thing. But they try to get it because they knew these are religions that were way before Jesus Christ, okay, before he came up. But these were stuff that was told in the Bible long same time this was happening so the devil had all this time to 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 mimic and and plant landmines of of different religions different stuff sounds the same sounds pretty close but then when the when christianity became so popular it's pretty easy to convert a whole bunch of pagans when when the worship to when you get a catholicism and stuff is still mother son and you still have all that mother son worship and other religions and all the pagan worship it's easy to convert all them when you have all them on the payroll and just flip them all over and say, "Hey, there you go. Now, now we now this is legal. We can't beat them. Let's join them. Let's have them all together. Now we have Christianity. Now you have all these different forms of Christianity, all these different man-made versions of it. And God's like, it's just like He told He told uh, He told Cain, 
uh uh-uh, I don't like that. That's not the worst. That's not how I want to be worshipped. I don't. I don't like that. Why are you so mad, dude? Don't. I just don't like it. I want. This is how I want it. And this is how. This is the narrow road. This is where, where not many people are going to find it. And and if you seek me and diligently, I will give you credit for that. If God's going to give you credit for what doing what Ken does, doing what we do, doing what anybody does, and seek Him diligently through the Bible and through the Word, and through always questioning things. Is you're gonna. Even if you're wrong about some stuff in the Bible, you could be wrong about a few things, but your salvation is not going to, you can never be wrong about that. Yeah. So the, this is part of what some people called astrotheology. And so they'll say, uh, Jordan Maxwell actually would say that, for instance, King Solomon, right? His mm-hmm. name is composed of three different words for the sun, soul, yes. palm, and on. Yes. That's exactly and what it's he like, said. Well, hold on a second. There was never any king named Solomon, because that's <laughs> an English transliteration that's modern. His name yeah. is Shlomo. Yeah. Right? So if you would have gone to ancient, ancient, ancient Israel and said, Where's your king Solomon? They would have said, What are you talking about? Our king's name is Shlomo. Yeah. Right. So, or, so he's uh, just taking that, he's taking the translated version of it, and he just basically studies that and goes, Oh, I could take this and make this and make that. And then he just tries to deceive the people, right? Yeah. So another one I've heard is, um, well, the day of rest or worship, however they want to put it, the Sabbath for the Jews was Saturn Day. Saturn yeah. Day. And the, the Christians turned it into Sun Day because they worship the sun. It's a, yeah. It's the same thing. That didn't work before English existed. It's just... Yeah. <laughs> That's just modern day stuff based on the English language. It doesn't work anywhere else in history at any time in any other language. And those people that controlled what they called those days are, are the people that do worship that type of stuff. You know, <laughs> the moon, the sun, you know, when, they, when they, I'm talking about the ones that probably translated and made the day yeah, called yeah. a Sunday or sat, those people are the ones that worship Saturn and the moon and all that stuff. That's well, that, not the, not the. They're, the you're made to worship them every day. Because you're you're made to look, you're made to recognize those days every day. You write them down. You you look in the stars in the sky. That's Jupiter. That's Saturn. You, they they named it for you. We're this we're this this little floating Earth that's by itself, and you have to worship. You have to you have to basically recognize these other gods all the time. And it's weird to me that that nobody sees that. Nobody understands that. People back then weren't stupid. They were not dumb. Okay, they were very smart, and they were more spiritual. They didn't have television rotting their brain. They didn't have the internet. You know, get, they had. They were. They were going. They were presenting their stuff to God all the time, and God was giving them the answers. And, he, and you got these guys were probably. I feel like people were super so smart back then that it was it was unbelievable how smart they were, and that's why kind of God was like, these guys were getting way too smart for their good. Look how much you can manage in eighty years of your life. You know, but and look at them in the in the Old Testament. They were living what 800, 900 years. You'd be a genius back. You'd be inventing things that you even in your fifth hundred year you could screw off in the first three hundred. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, screw off already. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Ken, so Ken, uh, <laughs> so Ken, like when I when I was reading about like uh, about Enoch, it, it was saying that it, I think it said. After the three hundred years, that's when he walked with God. Is it, I think that's I don't know if I interpreted that right, but um, uh, gosh, I'd have to read the actual verse for me to um, because well, it just reminded me of when you said that, Jason, where they lived for that long, like it, it almost said that like Enoch walked with God after a certain period, you know, it, like sixty five years, I think it was, or sixty years or something, and then he walked with God for the three hundred or something like that. But I just it just came to my head. I'm sorry, I, I may be misquoting that. It was, his, it was his buddy, bro. It was his friend. He's God wasn't friends with God wasn't friends with just a whole bunch of people in the Bible. It's friends with Abraham, Enoch. You, if you're walking with God, you're. you're I'll look up the verse real quick so I could. Yeah, I can me too. It. <laughs> it's, it's Genesis. I know what you're talking about. Man. I know what you're saying, but what you're saying is that he didn't always walk with God, right? You're saying like no, I'm not saying that he didn't walk with God. I'm just saying that it just, just the way that they said it was uh, it was interesting. Um, yeah, it's kind of like when you're many guys really don't mature until their 30s. Like yeah. you grew up and then you hit your thirties. You're like, okay, it's time. I, I got a kid on the way. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta really man up right now. This is, this is, this is guy out of hand. <laughs> we all can agree on that. My thirties were out of hand. Let's go. I think I want to be on the back nine of my thirties and, and be pretty good. 
I understand. I understand that, Josh. I know what you're saying to say. But okay. Like, okay. Cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know i'm not it's, it's all good it's all good anyways all right well let's keep let's keep this going man yeah it just says uh in genesis 5 when enoch lived 65 years he fathered methuselah enoch walked with god after he fathered methuselah 300 years and he had yeah. other sons and daughters and okay, then by yeah, the yeah. end of that uh all the days of enoch were 365 um enoch walked with god and he was not for god took him Perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the part I was talking about. <laughs> I just thought it was interesting. Um, okay. Besides, their genetics were very much closer to pristine back then, so yeah. their their bodies, their brains would have functioned more efficiently and better than ours do anyway. Yeah, I think so. I mean, and then uh, I know you get kind of into the Nephilim too, man. Uh, I would I would definitely like to kind of get into that. Um, uh, speaking of like DNA, you know, like, um, uh, what did you want to kind of get into that a little bit? I know, I know you're definitely a subject matter expert in that. Well, I'll tell you what I think might be more instructive to uh, talk about when it comes to the Nephilim is that there's a cottage industry right now. There's various actually cottage industries, plural, um, so for instance, I always make a point to note that if you go to any website that sells books nowadays, just look up Nephilim romance, dude, you'll find dozens and dozens and dozens of them. <laughs> okay. That just shows you how far it's gone that Nephilim are in romance novels. They're in songs, they're in movies and video games and comic books, absolutely everywhere, everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, and so there's that the various bandwagons you can jump on and become like I've known people who didn't exist online, period. Then they publish one single book that follows like the mainstream pop researcher line on Nephilim, and they are everywhere being invited mm -hmm. to present lectures on TV shows, uh, having books published, like nothing, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just because they follow the party line, honestly. That's really what it is. And so the, the main um, popular view of Nephilim is not so much about uh, Genesis 6, although that obviously is the premise of it, but it's really the claim that Nephilim somehow survived or returned or something so that they lived post-flood and that they were very, very, very tall and that other people such as Anakin were related to them. That's really mm. the rub. It's That's really where the rubber hits the road. And that's the main premise of the, the party line nowadays. If you want to be popular, you go with that. And so that's claimed that come right out of the Bible. But that is, comes out of the part of the Bible that's recording a deception. It's not telling you, hey, this is God inspired. What's inspired is that God had it recorded that whoever said that, was presenting an evil report. I mean, the, the, the narrative of the Numbers chapter 13 makes that abundantly clear from so many angles that the claim was deceptive. Mm -hmm. It was a fear-mongering, scare tactic, uh, don't go in the woods type of tall tale to try to justify why the guys who said that were trying to encourage the Israelites to not do what God had commanded them to do, which is to conquer the land. Yeah, enter the land. Say, no, 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 no. We won't be able to do this. You'll never guess what we saw. And it was a total deception. And But the point is that it's spiritual warfare. So that arose out of being unfaithful and disloyal and uh, not obeying God so that it seems to me that that spiritual warfare is still being fought so that whoever actually believes that and teaches it, they end up in some weird place where um, once they are perpetuating that evil report, that um, unfaithful disloyalty to God himself, something happens to them. And I'm telling you, uh, for instance, when I interact online, the people who treat me the worst are atheists and people who believe in post-blood Nephilim. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's uncanny and it's like ongoing continuously. Are they that, Christians? Uh, yes. I mean, as far as I know, they claim to be. 
Well, okay. I'm, I'm going to go. I, I look at it this way. My point of view is that I do believe in a bloodline that something would happen to there. I do believe something, some, something did happen. I don't know the truth, but it, I look at it this way. It's they're not really mentioned that much in the Bible for a reason, because people already knew about them. They didn't need to be told about them. They didn't need, the, the, the book that they were writing to was the people of the time right there. So they already knew about that. It's like you said, folklore or whatever it was. And, and giants in the Bible, when it was turned over, it doesn't mean gigantes doesn't mean giants. It means earthborn. It means, it means, it means, it, it means a different thing that they say. So they just took it and ran with it. Oh, it's giants. It's giants. Like you said, Joshua the only came back and said, no, we can conquer the land. Don't worry about it. God's got our back. And the other two came back with a, with a bad report. And I understand where you're coming from because it's, it, it sounds like they came back with a bunch of lies just to fear to start out, to start them from not wanting to conquer the land. But also in Paul, and I don't know if, what book it is, but Paul does say, don't go down useless genealogies and myth because all it does is get you into trouble. Yeah. You can believe what you want. But there's only so far you go down that rabbit hole. After a while, it starts now, to get arguments about people, and you start going past the whole point of even believing in the Bible. You start to believe in fairy tales. Well, and you go past all this other stuff. I'll just say this: yeah. we've had we've had a a Nephilim show like when we we were probably like maybe 15 episodes in uh, with this gentleman named Ark. We you know we went over that. So we're we're. As you, as you know, Ken, we're 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 like forty five episodes in, so we're we're just we're digging as for, as much as we can. We're still learning. We're still in our uh, research stages of the Bible, obviously, and a lot of different things. So you'll hear some of our episodes, as as everybody knows, our our listeners, where we're talking about Nephilim as being giants and all that stuff. So I brought Ken on the show because he has a, a different uh, he has a view of this where it you know either way, man. It, 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 it makes sense one way and, 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 and I don't know the other way is, is tough too, you know, but I just wanted to bring Ken on because we got to have different views. We can't just go with this. Oh, yeah, we're yeah. only going to go with one view and that's it. But um, well, the interesting well, thing, Ken, real quick before you go, um, Noah, when he said he's a just man and perfect in his generations uh, and Noah walk with God, like when they said that, so like Noah's, do you, do you believe that Noah's bloodline was, was, was perfect or was it unblemished? uh type of deal like when 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 you know noah and his sons and never and his daughters that that stayed or that uh that lived after the flood i would say that would be a fair speculation yeah okay. I, I wouldn't have a problem with that i think that a more direct route is that we're being told that he was righteous because mm -hmm. when you compare what we're told about abraham and what we're told about noah it, it matches so closely that it helps us understand what we're being told about Noah. The point is that he was righteous in his generation, not necessarily genetically pure. Mm -hmm. But if we want to throw in a genetic aspect that, you know, I would categorize that as speculation, but it's not a bad it's speculation. It's a because, cool subject to talk about, though. That's why it's like you throw it in there with the Bible. You're like, oh, it's kind of a cool thing to throw on, but nobody knows. Well, nobody the, knows, but it's cool. To, it's cool to have those beliefs, but... Like I said, it, w whether or not you you believe in this stuff or not, it's not going to make me judge you. These people shouldn't treat other people differently because what they believe in about that. If the, if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, you have a lot more problems. Yeah. <laughs> you have a lot more problems. <laughs> in the yeah, I mean, yeah. Whether anything goes on. So uh, if you go off the Bible and you read it, yes, there was probably something back then that was, because it's in all of history. There's all those little stories that are all in history. Something's... You know, if you read between the lines, something's got to be true about something. It's well, got, Ken, you know, Ken believes. Something. Ken believes in the Nephilim. He he just doesn't. You, you just he's just pointing out the fact that it doesn't doesn't say anything about the actual height of the Nephilim, and it doesn't say we don't know the actual height. And 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 we're not. And like me, I'm the type of person Ken. I I don't jump to. Well, uh, I know that, Sean's bed was was. I know. Was, I know. Was, but like, you got to listen to this. Feet. Hold on. You got you got to hear this. Hear me out. I, I don't jump to the book of Enoch or any of that stuff. I, I just stick with what, what I have, the 66 books, like the Holy Bible. That's what I stick with. Some people tell me, oh, you're crazy because of the older, you know, the Enoch is, well, you can't trace. I don't know anybody that could trace that book of Enoch back to Enoch himself, you know? And I, that's the reason why I don't go back to that. I mean, I, it's cool to like, my brother talks about it, which is very, very, very true. Like it's good to go back. Like, I guess to, 
from what they were talking that's grammar the language, stuff like that that's but. the way the language was talked and if you get in it and and that's the way and that's what the rabbis were teaching back then as well so is that how you feel too ken about about the book of enoch how do you feel about that one yeah actually one of my books is about the books plural of enoch and yeah i think uh read it it's good for grammatical context, historical context, cultural context, but it is a second temple era book, meaning like a couple hundred years before the time of Jesus. And it's basically just embellishing folklore and take it for what it is. It's, it's a fun story, but uh, you shouldn't be applying it to your theology. Mm -hmm. So yeah, some, mean, it, some people went crazy on me on that too. They, they're like, Oh dude, it's in the, it, it, you know, it's like in Ethiopian. How could you talk about the historicity, the, the Ethiopians that's, that's even further back. And I'm like, well, there's no, there's no way you can, you can, um, you know, the historicity of that, you can't take it back to Enoch, which you, it needs to be back to Enoch. Just like it, it's back to Matt, Matthew. I mean, this is the English version. Okay. I'm not Matthew. I know what it was. I don't know what his Hebrew name was, but you know, Matthew, Luke, uh, Paul, like the historicity of it is they take it back to those authors. They make sure that it's in those times and then they place it into the actual Bible, the Holy Bible. Right. So if, if I'm correct there, so that's why I, I personally, I, I, whenever I'm on people's shows and they start doing that, I, I it's, it's okay, man. I, it's like, they're maybe they don't know, but they, they kind of just go like they rely heavily on that and they, they, they use it as a crutch. And I'm like, you can't use it as a crutch because Enoch, if he actually wrote that, I know the book of Jude talks about, but it doesn't say like that, that actual book of Enoch. It just says the Jude well, says, it says, says Enoch prophesied. Yes. Prophesied. Quotes, yeah, it doesn't say the actual book of Enoch. A prophecy of Enoch that appears yeah. in the Ethiopic book of Enoch. Well, just like Paul quotes Greek poets. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's similar. Now, I would I would say so. Okay, the Ethiopian Church has Ethiopic Enoch on their canon. Uh, so the fact that they're extremely unique, that either makes them very right or very wrong. Okay. Yeah. Now they also have other apocryphal texts in their canon that, believe me, you don't want any part of. So it's sorry. It's, I'm not sorry. Actually, it's not good like enough. Gnos like Gnostic say, type oh. stuff. Is it like Gnostic type texts, or what do you think? Apocryphal is like like it's got like like Bible the dragon. It's got a whole, like books that that are that could well other books too, like the life of Adam and Eve and yeah. other books, you know, yeah. apocryphal okay. and pseudepigraphical books. But so yeah, it's not good enough to just say, well, it's in the Ethiopic canon. Ergo, it's inspired by God and it belongs in the canon. And the number of times I've been told, well, Ethiopic Enoch was removed from the Bible. And I mm -hmm. go, well, so you're claiming that God inspired it and meant it to be on the canon, but then mere human beings defeated God and removed it? Really? I mean, is that really where you want to go with this, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, but I don't even understand what is it that we're supposed to be getting out of Ethiopic Enoch that we're not getting out of the Bible, except just exciting details. I, mean, I don't understand. No, I, I, you start getting people down that rabbit hole, and they don't even they don't even focus on Jesus Christ anymore. They're just focused on I'm hammering my my point across, <laughs> and the Nephilim are real. The giants, come on! It's like, hey, maybe it was, maybe it's not. I mean, ultimately, I know that hopefully people won't be so fixated on Nephilim, and they'll they'll end up saying that Ethiopic Enoch appears to be predicting Jesus, and I, that's fair enough. I mean, if that's where you want to go with it then that's a good focus to have. And I'm not going to argue against that. But the, yeah, thing, heard, about, yeah, the thing about Nephilim is the, the, the biblical material is so succinct and boring that no one's going to be making a living off of it. <laughs> You're not going to be able to establish an entire quote unquote ministry just talking about that stuff every day. Um, and yeah. that's why these guys ending up making up what I call Theo- uh, neo theo sci fi. It's just tall tales. They got to do, they got to make something out of nothing because they got to have something to do with their time. But anyhow, let me just, I'll just, the material in the Bible is so succinct. I could literally give it to you in a minute. Yeah. It's, it's that simple. It's that uh, before the flood, uh, sons of God, and there's uh, arguments to be made that they were angels. That's actually the angel view is the original traditional and majority view amongst the Jews and Christians alike for centuries, mm -hmm. starting BC and going on to AD days. That's a, that was the, the common view, period. And I published a whole book just proving that. 
So mm -hmm. then uh, before the flood, angels mated with human women and they gave birth to these offsprings that are called Nephilim. And all we're told about them in Genesis is that they were mighty and they were mm -hmm. of renown. So they were well known. We don't even know why they were very well known, but they were very well known. Period. Okay, so we know <clears throat> when they first existed, we know who their parents were. We know they were mighty and well known. And then comes the flood. So then what do you do? Um, okay, well, about five different times, we're told that Noah and his family and some animals survived the flood. Yeah. So you have to, you have to uh, admit that Nephilim didn't survive the flood. Many people do claim that they survive it, but they're flat out contradicting the Bible at least five times. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that needs to be done away with instantly. And I don't care if you're having them hiding in caves on the ground or riding on top of the ark or even making it through genetically through the daughters, uh, uh, the wives of Noah's sons. Uh, because Basically, those are just things people invented to get Nephilim through the flood. And they all imply that God failed, by the way. It's like they found a loophole that God missed. Oh, we're going to have to them survive genetically. Huh? God didn't think of that one. You know what I mean? <laughs> so the flood brings it all to a full and final end. Period. Done. That's it. End of story. The only reason the story continues is because then in Numbers 13, which is post-flood, you have the spying out of the land of Canaan, and then the spies coming back to report to the congregation what they saw. And there's two reports in that narrative. There's two reports. There's the original report that's accept, accepted as is, and it talks about the, that it's a good land, and it talks about the various people groups they saw, and it specifies where those various people groups live. And it talks about how they live in fortified cities that are very large and that the people are strong. So obviously that's intimidating because at that time, the Israelites are tent dwellers. They're itinerant. They're moving around. They're living in tents and they're being told, hey, we're going to have to confront multiple people groups that are strong and they live in cities that are well fortified. Yeah, that's, that's pretty scary. Okay, God is on their side. They're not supposed to be intimidated by that. But yeah. obviously, being human beings, they were. So then Caleb says, get her done, basically. He's like, we will surely be able to conquer them. That's it. Let's go. And then the, we end up finding Joshua sides with Caleb. So then it's the 10 left over out of the 12 who say, no, we're not going to be able to do this because those people are stronger than we are. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the discouragement right there. Then the narration tells us that they go on to present an evil report. And it's the evil report where they, they claim that the land devours its inhabitants. So wait a minute. They just contradicted the original, original report that said the mm -hmm. land was good. That's a contradiction mm -hmm. right there. Why are we going to believe these guys, right? And that the land was good, incidentally, flowing with milk, milk and honey. That's stated like 20 times in the Bible. So there's contradicting scripture multiple times if you believe the land was bad. And they say, oh, all the people of the land are of great stature. Really? Because the original report said they were strong. And even you guys said, well, they're stronger than we. All of a sudden, when your back's against the wall, now you're going to embellish that and you're going to suddenly claim all of those people are of great stature. That's suspect right there. And then the famous line that, duh, there we saw the Nephilim. Really? Because the original report listed numerous people groups. Didn't say a word about Nephilim. All of a sudden, you're just inserting them into the picture. And incidentally, they're just generic. We saw them. They don't specify where. But the original report had specified where every people group lived. So that's at least a missing data point. They're just making it up, obviously. Oh, we saw Nephilim. Don't ask us where, because we're just making it up. We're not going to say that, right? And then uh, there's a textual issue that I'll bypass. But essentially, it appears that they claim the Anakim are related to Nephilim. 
which uh, is why then people run all the way back to Genesis and try to invent ways that Nephilim either survived or returned. The Bible doesn't say anything about any of that whatsoever. So, okay, you're claiming Anakim are related to Nephilim? That doesn't exist in the Bible anywhere else. And we know that Anakim are named after Anak, and that Anak was the son of Arba. And sure, we don't have a full genealogy of them, but certainly nothing that would tie them to uh, Nephilim. Okay, and then they claim, well, Nephilim were very, very, very tall, right? Compared to them, we're like grasshoppers. Another thing, nowhere in the whole entire Bible, because remember, we just considered Genesis 6. It doesn't provide us a physical description of them. The only one we have is from unfaithful, disloyal, contradictory, embellishing spies, whom God rebuked, by the way, for what they said. And incidentally, don't listen to me. Uh, I just had a debate recently with Gary, Way uh, Gary, uh, Gary Wayne, and he stated outright, he does not know how tall Nephilim were, nor does yeah. he know how tall well, yeah, Odd was, by the way. Yeah, you, you couldn't, you, yeah, you, you, if you read the Bible, yeah, you can't. That's what I was looking through right. before, you know, as, as I was listening, because I listened to the debate. I listened to, and you guys both, I mean, you guys are both amazing people, and, and I love you both, man. You guys you guys dig deep in your research, and, and obviously Gary Wayne's digging deep, and you're digging deep. I mean, you've written so many books. I have so much respect for both of you, and I love both of you guys, you know? So, I appreciate that. Man. You know, there's probably some people that were huge and, and like, like, like Goliath. You know, okay, but but hold on. Um, but not like like you say. Sometimes stories get embellished throughout the years. It's kind of like, oh, I caught a fish this big. And then <laughs> I got a, oh, I got it was this big. And the ten years I wrote, I caught a four thousand pound fish. You know, and I'm the great. It's like I understand. Or, I'm gonna get embellished. Did you hear of the one armed fisherman? He caught a <laughs> fish this big. <laughs> <laughs> Good okay. death. <laughs> but see what you're saying is okay. true because by the time you get to Ethiopic Enoch, which is millennia after the Torah was written, all of a sudden Nephilim are miles tall. Okay, three three thousand L's. That's like miles. Yeah, that's huge. I mean, that's great folklore, but that's not good reality, right? And yeah. So that's the type of stuff, man. That I was like, uh, I'm fighting. My wife has your exact. Um, your exact uh, point of view on, on, on Genesis six. When I talk well, to her, I like her. Well, she, she has your exact point of view and she tells me, you know, because we we're equally yoked on a lot of stuff, but I'm like a conspiracy theorist and I dig deep on different stuff. And, and I've been yeah. exposed to a lot in the last 45 shows. You'd, you'd probably imagine you too with your 50 books. I mean, geez, but, um, she doesn't dig deep in research and stuff, but she, her, her point of view, she's college educated. She's, she's pretty smart girl. She's like, she's like, they're probably just super intelligent. They're, they're men of renown. They're like, they're the reason why they're, they're probably like, you know, she just thinks of it differently. Like, and I, and I'm, I was trying to prove to her that there were giants, but like you said, man, I, I digged everywhere to find out the height, but where did you find that Goliath was seven foot one? Is that the original Taurus uh, or the original text said you said? Okay, well, I heard you remember, say that. Just remember that if we're looking at the biblical material, we're told they were mighty and of renown, but not why. That's why she's speculating maybe they were intelligent, but we just mm -hmm. flatly do not know, period. That's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. And and so my and point like, like like maybe they were like Olympians or something like that, where you are very strong and they always do like they probably maybe they were slaves and they were just they were always doing like kind of like a conan the, the type of dude that was just very strong and just you know what i mean like look at nimrod if you go down that line you have look at noah no noah, noah was righteous right but nimrod comes out of noah's line right what happened what happened with 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 his son that 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 at that moment when because god didn't curse that line noah cursed the line his line so what what did he yeah. where did that because Nimrod's is referred to as as also a mighty man, kind of like a, 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 he was a but he wasn't no hunter of like animals. He was a hunter of men. He was a he was a straight just like great conqueror. That's what that's what I heard. I I just that's the stuff that I stood. That I stood. Yeah. That's but, it in the Bible. It says he's the hunter of men in the Bible in Genesis. Well, no, no. It says no. he was a hunter. Yeah, it just says he was a hunter. But I believe that. He oh, was. It's a, it's I'm sorry. Yeah, it's an apocryphal text that yeah. claims he hunted men. 
Oh, my bad. And maybe, Sorry maybe. That. Okay, so see, maybe Nephilim were unusually tall. My point is, we shouldn't say that about them because we don't know. And if mm -hmm. we're going to say that about them, we need to we need to admit that we're speculating. Mm -hmm. In fact, that was one of my things about Gary Wayne that are so odd is he referred to Nephilim as giants. So I asked him how he knows how tall they were. So he admitted he doesn't know how tall they were. So I said, well, then you can't call them giants. And he insists he will continue calling them giants, even after admitting he doesn't know how tall they were. So you don't have to think about different sides of a, of a interpretive issue here to understand that is incoherent. That has nothing to do with theology. That's just incoherent that you're going to refer to somebody as being a giant when you admit you don't know how tall they were. It just, that's just a whole different category. It's not just about interpretation. You get a term that's tall tale from that. As you get a tall tale, a lot. That, that type of type of talk, you start building up something that, that you don't even know. You might, I like Darren Wayne. I love, I love talking to him conversations. I'm not gonna lie. I like, I like what he's got to say. And I like, I like, I like, I like the stuff he comes with because it's very interesting. Yes. But it, you cannot claim something because you were not there. So you can't just say he was, a, it was a giant because I could be, you know, I, you, you can't see like my, how they say my, uh, your, when you're a popular person, you're, you're, it's going to, it's going to perceive you, your, 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 your whole perception, people perceiving you is going to be, a, could be a lot bigger. You could be, you know, yeah. you fight with somebody and you knock somebody out with a punch. Yeah. It's gonna go to, when people go down the line, they're like, oh, that guy just. He hit him with a punch. He exploded his face. He, the guy died right there. Everybody was, and it's, it's, you could make a tall tale out of something that, 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 because a mighty man could be, you it's, know, smart. It's man, all, said, it you got to understand, you got to understand, you got to respect both interpretations because it's like interpreting the Bible. And, and I understand where Ken is coming from. And I understand where Gary's coming from. And it, it's, it's like, I could read the prophecy of Daniel, like we went over last night and I could get a, a perception of prophecy of Daniel and like the gentleman, you know, somebody else could have a prophecy of Daniel in a total different light. So what we try to do, we just got to pray to God for discernment. And obviously Ken, you've prayed to God for that. And Gary's prayed to God for that as well. Right. And, and, and it's go ahead. I'm sorry, Ken, go ahead. Let's see. A numerical based prophecy, for example, might be, is a different type of issue because then you have to determine yeah. when do you start the counting of that? When is the decree? Those are different issues than something yeah. as basic as if you don't know how tall somebody was, you have disqualified yourself from legitimately calling them a giant. But when you insist that you're going to just keep right on doing it, there's something fundamentally wrong with that is what I'm saying. So yeah. the, the, the logic would be, hey, you know what? Since I don't know how tall they were, I can't call them giant, just like I can't call them short stuff. I can't call them little people. Uh, I can't call them anything about their height because I just admit it that I don't know their height. Why doesn't yeah. he call them midgets or dwarves, right? Why not? I mean, it, he, anyhow, he believes man. he believes wholeheartedly with this heart, you know, that they were giants and, and that's just the way he, he's interpreting it. And it's all respect to him. I interpret it the same way. I, I need to I need to dig more, dig deep and, but, and but, find out. That's all. That's pretty much what so, it is. You know, you so guys. Are point, both but the point is, that's not an interpretation. That's just importing an artificial construct into a text that says nothing about it because he's the one that admitted it. Mm -hmm. That's the, the, the strange thing about it, how you can refer to somebody with a term that refers to height after you admit you don't know their height. I'm just saying it's that basic. It's not about yeah. interpretation. It's not. And good thing it doesn't depend on our salvation, you know, so good thing yeah, it doesn't because yeah. we'll, 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 we're going to we're going to stroll past the Nephilim <laughs> and let's get on to some transhumanism, man. Let's get into yeah. that real quick. We have about another 15 minutes or 20 minutes. To OK, so very quickly, um, I found myself thinking about transhumanism in terms of worldview philosophy, meta issues, you know. And kind of tracing back the idea, where did it come from and what is it? So now to begin with transhumanism is, it's a very complex topic because it really covers a lot of ground. 
uh, and there's also the terminology like some people might refer to uh, post-humanism or futurism or even the, an H with a plus sign next to it, humanity plus. And so it's kind of hard to keep tabs on, but it's basically a view of somehow at some level melding together technology and humanity. And there's a quotation, I can't ever discuss transhumanism without quoting Isaac Asimov because he hit the nail on the head decades ago and this is what he said. I wonder if we'll make robots so much like men and make and make men so much like robots that eventually we'll lose the distinction altogether and have a combined culture. This may be best after all. Maybe humanity itself will die out as humanity and sort of melt into this machine culture. Okay, mm. so what I did is, um, one is I wrote a book, uh, movie reviews, of movies that contain transhumanism themes because my movie review books are not based on you know acting or plot or scenery and all this stuff I don't <laughs> care about, but about the worldview philosophy. So this one's transhuman Hollywood from normative, normative fiction to predictive programming. And then um, I wrote one that was more about tracing the idea through what I'll run through very quickly right now. This book is called The Golden Golem Goal. Mm -hmm. Say that five times fast. <laughs> and the subtitle, I have two of them, uh, subtitle from Organism to Transhumanism, and then On the Tangled Web of Occult Mystical Alchemy and High-Tech Transhumanist Chemistry. So all that to say, in my mind, um, what, what this all stems from is when you think about Genesis 2 and God creating man from the dust of the ground, right? God creates yeah. a basic humanoid form out of the dust of the ground, brings it to life. Okay, now, later on, much later, centuries, millennia, you have um, mythology that contains stories about mechanical beings. And then people actually tinkering with um, automata trying to create metallic beings that kind of are very rudimentary forms of uh, robotics even if we're just talking about something that winds up and moves very early later on in history we keep tinkering with these gadgets and then what happens in rabbinic judaism okay not not god's religion in the bible in the old testament we're talking about rabbinic Judaism that's very much like its own entity, right? Because, for instance, there's no rabbis in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. That's a whole history lesson on its own. But, okay, rabbinic Judaism develops a branch called uh, Kabbalah, and that's rabbinic Judaism's mysticism. Okay, now in oh, yeah. Kabbalah, folklore or not, this is just the claim that a rabbi could go through an initiation whereby he would take dust to the ground, form it into a basic humanoid form and bring it to life. And that's what's called a golem. Wow. Okay. When, now, um, when, when, my, when was my this? Book, I have heard this. This is this is a, I've heard this on, on a couple of podcasts. And this is about like, this is mysticism. This is mystic. Well, this is what the mystics do. They take an object that is inanimate and put life into it. And it, this is, this is pretty, and I've heard of the golem and, and it's, that's crazy, man. It, it, I was oh. talking about this a couple days ago. This was not even, this is, this, is, this is insane. How, how what is the time? Ken, what's, what's the timeline of this? Like when they're saying they actually did this, like what, what, what is this like recently? Is this? Okay. So, you know? okay. That's what I was saying folklore or not. I don't mean, I don't know. I don't see how they could have ever actually accomplished that okay. unless there was some demonism involved. And again, yeah. I don't know. That's what I'm it sounds like. That, that's the claim. That's the okay. claim. Okay. And no it's problem. early enough, enough so that uh, there's, there's vestiges of it in, uh, at least in the uh, Talmud Babli, the, the Babylonian Talmud. So you're talking about um, the first couple of centuries AD. And okay. maybe maybe going back in, into BC, it's there's a lot of background there we'd have to, to trace, but it goes pretty okay. early. Uh, the original tales are just that it's strictly an initiation. The second the golem comes to life, it's supposed to be sent back to the dust once it came, and that's it. Because it was mm -hmm. just supposed to demonstrate that the rabbi had attained this ability to be like God, essentially. Mm, I okay. see. 
Then later on, you get fancy folklore about the golems uh, protecting the Jews, doing programs, or just uh, going nuts and destroying stuff or whatever, all kinds of stories. I've got a ton of them in my book traces that kind of a history. But the point being that um, it's this concept of emulating God and, and not emulating God in the good way, like you, we should be holy yeah. like he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so <laughs> then if you think about um, tales like uh, Frankenstein, right? Yeah. It's a basic golem tale. Sure, it's not forming the dust of the ground into a humanoid form, but it's taking previously living matter and bringing it back to life. It's, it's just a golem tale is really what yeah. it is. And incidentally, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley is subtitled uh, or the modern Prometheus, which might be interesting to some people. Mm. And then you end up with um, like uh, the next step I generally jump to that's recognizable for people would be the 1927 Fritz Lang movie Metropolis, mm -hmm. where guess what? You have a, an android, right? An anthropomorphic robot who is brought to life by uploading the contents of a woman's brain and becomes a living thing that appears to be like her. It's just another golem tale. It's just updated to sci-fi, right? It's becoming yeah. more technological. It's not just yeah. mystical anymore. It's, it's kind of the mysticism is sort of hidden behind the, the technology. Because if you remember in, in Metropolis, it is an occultist scientist who is doing that. Yeah. I mean, he's got the android with a gigantic upside down pentagram behind it. <laughs> and incidentally, the, the novel Metropolis actually contains a lot more occultism than the movie did. And yeah. so all I'm saying is then you just go off and running from there. You could point to so many sci-fi movies and stories after that that are basically just modern day uh, golem tales. So that transhumanism kind of jumps out of the pages of what appears to just be mystical folklore or um, technological sci-fi. And then it becomes a reality because we're developing the technology where these things could <laughs> actually begin happening. So yeah. that by the time you're rethinking the book of Revelation, you're like, wait a minute, an image that comes to life? I'm sure for millennia they thought, oh, that's <laughs> either <laughs> just a symbolic <laughs> or who knows what. But today it's like, and I'm not claiming to know what it is, but I'm saying it, today it's like, oh, yeah, an image coming to life. Pfft, we could see that happening in various ways. It could be who knows what it could be, a hologram, yeah. a robot. It could be so many things that could be done with today's technology, much less what, what who knows what they, we'll come up with tomorrow. They're trying they're trying to download your consciousness into a, into an AI. You know, it's, it's, it's getting that crazy. And then um, uh, Elon Musk with his uh, Neuralink, you know, he's trying to connect your brain. And that's like, for me, I think that's like creating a channel for a demon to come in, you know, in my, my opinion. Um, uh, and then the graph, the graphene is another thing that some people, you know, they try to stay away from talking about, but yeah, that's, that's pretty interesting stuff. I don't know too much about it and I, and I don't want to get too, too into it, but it's another thing, man, you play a beat and it starts moving at low frequency and stuff. And then, you know, you put that into somebody's body and, with this lot of different technology they have, who knows what they, what's going to happen, you know? It's interesting stuff, man. And Very me, interesting. Let me, let me, yeah, did you want to say something? Jason, yeah, did you want to say something, bro? I'm sorry, man. You're I, muted, I you. by the way, Jason. You're muted. Oh, no, you no, muted? no, 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 worries. I'm just listening. No, 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 okay, I was, okay. sorry, my wife. My yeah, wife. I'll <laughs> give you a biblical application, okay? So I was just talking to somebody the other day who works – whatever he works for the military and he does um training so basically you're putting pilots in a virtual environment where they can do um, a lot of uh training where they don't actually have to be on in an airplane right and that technology has been around for a very long time but i'm pointing out that i was talking to him about how it's becoming more and more integrative that the pilot is being put into this virtual environment that simulates something about real life and i told him well yeah today we have pilots sitting in the united states piloting drones that are across the planet right yeah so yep. the next step would be more like uploading somehow the contents of the pilot's brain into the vehicle that's across the planet that would be like the next step obviously you know so no need for somebody even to control it like the it's yeah yeah, that makes so, sense. Like, let's say you get a neural link put in your head, and then that connects to that 
thing. And then you just have to think of where you want it to go instead of actually controlling it with the, uh, with the joystick. So now again, um, applying this to something that the Bible mentioned millennia ago that seemed like there's nothing to see here, folks. This is just a vision that Ezekiel was having. Well, wait a minute. Let's think about technology for a second. So in Ezekiel chapters 1 and 10, he's describing the cherubim. Okay. And then he mentions that wherever they moved, these ophanim, the it's generally translated wheels within wheels. Yeah. They're just following right along where, wherever the cherubim are going. And this is the key it specifies that the spirit of the cherubim were in the ophanim. Mm. So their spirits, they were somehow able to take their spirits and put them into these, whatever they were, these wheels within wheels, and they're piloting them around. Wow. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> That's, That's exactly what we're trying to do today. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they call it spirit. We would call it mind or brain, but I mean, yeah. The same thing. It's being able to take your consciousness to stick it inside of a technological um, vehicle or uh, a drone or whatever it might be and actually being able in to interact as that thing. So like you're the ghost in that machine. You see yeah, what I'm there's there's a, I don't know if you ever seen the show Black Mirror. Um, there's a lot of predictive programming going on where like there's the this ladies, they're like 90 years old and they're they're on the hospital bed. And they, they have to make a decision like, do you want to stay in this virtual world where we'll download your consciousness and you guys can keep going? Like, basically, they're just going to parties like they're being young again. Uh, whatever, whatever. You know, they're lesbian, kissing each other, whatever. I mean, that's do whatever they're doing. That's that's whatever they're trying to promote. But anyways, so they're um, so that's pretty much where they're pushing there with the predictive programming. Uh, there's another thing I forgot. I was going to, there was something else I was going to bring up too. another, another movie that was predicted programming to that, but, um, I can't, I can't think of it right now. I mean, nowadays, <laughs> essentially every sci-fi movie has some element of, uh, combining high tech with biology at some level or another. It's like yeah. almost inevitable that it's going to be there. Well, yeah. like 007, the new 007, nanobots that are that go oh, yeah. in the body and 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 control and, and they're having that's the new oh, thing. Oh, bro! Humanity yes. in that movie. It's like, oh, come on, man! You guys are you guys are just laughing at us now, just throwing stuff in our faces. It's like, I watched this. I watched that. It's always sunny in Philadelphia, and I watch how much the predictive program they just put on that popular show. It's like, wow, man! Now that I did, now I have, now I have the discernment of like when like now watching it instead of watching it with the blind eye and just laughing at it. Now mm -hmm. I'm just like looking at every little thing. You're like, wow, man, they really push things that you are I not can't, paying attention to. I can't watch anything anymore without without uh, <laughs> breaking it down like that. And and it's very, I mean, honestly, I'm. It's like uh, I think Sam Tripley was talking about it, where his wife was gonna watch this show or. He was going to watch Adele get interviewed by Oprah. And then he just drops like four bombs on his wife before he walks out of the room. And she's like, why is she going to want to watch it? Thinking that she, Oprah's just a Satanist and Adele's doing this and that it's it's hard, man. It's like, you dig really deep. You find out so much information. You can't even watch You can't even be a normal person. You watch the news and they say this, 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 and this. And you're like, okay, I could strategically break that down into knowing that's just an agenda dude, they're pushing. Dude, listen, and that's just, uh I could, we could watch a Twix candy bar commercial and I could yes. take you step by step about how it's based on Freemasonic <laughs> philosophy straight up. <laughs> I mean, no, you Seriously. wouldn't even, yeah, it's just straight up. And I'm not even saying that there's some dark conspiracy there. Maybe it's just because a Freemason had to come up with an advertisement idea and say, well, I'm going to pull from what I know. I don't know that part, but that, that it's actually a fact that it's Freemasonic fault. It's straight up. Yeah. You, know, you tell that to the average person. Hey, man, let me tell you about how this, this candy bar commercial based on Freemasonic philosophy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> seriously, I know, bro. When I'm at work, when I'm at work and I'm in front of my boss, I just, he tries to like dig a lot of stuff out of me, but I'm just like, yeah. listen, like, Dave, I'm just going to be quiet because I don't want to even tell you. If I open up the can of worms, you're going to just think I'm, you think I'm on a different level, man. Fire and, me. And my, this guy's whacked. <laughs> Anyways, and there's a Freemason in the room while I'm talking, so I don't. I try to keep it like, hey, I'm definitely not going to talk about this. It's like, but, hey, you're blinded. You're lower level. They don't tell you anything. Wait till you get to the 
right yeah, you're yeah. Like, you're like uh, yeah. how's Hiram uh, <laughs> how's Hiram Rabiff doing dude um, or how's Saul uh, Men's Temple no I'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> hey, this was a great show, Ken, and I really, I really appreciate you coming on and, and giving us your time. Seriously, man. And I, I think we're kind of we're at the point where we I think we covered a lot. And if if you have honestly, dude, if you have anything uh, that you would like to talk about on our show, we're a Christian and conspiracy show, so you know you're always welcome, man, for sure. Appreciate it. And uh, can you please? I'm sorry. Can you please shout out anything that, you know, your website, shout out your books, anything that you would like to promote to our audience. And hopefully they stuck around to the end, you know? <laughs> well, yeah. Thank you, gents. It's been a pleasure and really, really interesting as well, by the way. And I appreciate your input. That was the best part for me. Uh, yeah, yeah. For me, I always make it super simple. Uh, if you just go to my website, books, videos, everything's just very easy to find there so it's just truefreethinker.com and it's very user friendly perfect stop and, also uh, a few dozen books you know yeah for sure guys you get 50 books you guys can buy them all of them and we'll give you a deal for not Christmas. just kidding <laughs> now check out his book so guys uh we really appreciate ken coming on taking his time out uh support him uh you know i don't know if that's what is, is that I don't know if that's all you like. I know you have a couple of jobs you said, or, you know, you're working and you know, he needs, he needs your support guys. So help him out. And um, we're going to end this in prayer. Jason, did you have anything else you wanted to say to Ken before we get off? Or are you good? Killer, killer, killer job. Thanks for your, thanks for the info. And, and uh, it, it definitely, it definitely kind of solidifies some of my, my, my thoughts too. Cause then I can have fire. I think, I think on a good basis, the way you do too, I have a, I, I don't just, I don't like to just, say something is something when I don't know if it's, if it, that's the case, if that's not what it's, because if I'm not there, I can't, I don't have, I don't have eyewitness account of it. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna uh, just boldly say it's true or not. So I like to keep that. I, I like to keep my mind open about things like that. Especially. I personally you know, game went feet first into this, into the Nephilim and the giant thing. So I'm going to do some study and I'm going to look at both sides of you guys as uh, you know, you guys are our, our interpretations and, and dig, but let's send this in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you so much for giving us a clear connection. Thank you for having, uh, you know, connecting us with Ken. We re really appreciate it, Lord. And um, we just want to say thank you so much for everything you do for us. I want to pray for Ken and his family and, uh, you know, please uh, keep them safe during these times. Uh, Ken at work, you know, let them have a good days at work. Uh, please Bless me with a good day at work tomorrow too, Lord. And Jason, a uh, good day at work when he goes on Monday. And anybody that's going through any hardships right now, Lord, you know what they're going through. Please, if it's your will, let it be done and help them out. And if anybody has any type of strongholds that they're being uh, held down with uh, by the devil, Lord, please you know, loosen those strongholds and please help them out, Lord. In Jesus' name, thank you so much. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh no problem, Ken. Uh, maybe in a couple months, if you want to jump back on, if that's okay with you, bro, we'll, we'll, we'll sure. definitely love and to have you, you back ever on. If you want to have me have a, you know, a discussion with somebody else who might hold a slightly different view, then just let me know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if I can handle those bars <laughs> going against each other. Anyways, all right. Well, thank you guys so much. We love you guys. And please uh, share it, like, subscribe. Uh, we love you guys. Thank you so much for listening.